En we zijn weer terug vanuit de Kromhouthallen de hele dag. Live Emers ID met uh, allemaal mooie interviews met uh, gasten die hier op het podium hebben gestaan. En uh, voor wie live kijkt, je vindt ons niet alleen uh, via de website, maar ook via de Facebookpagina van Emers. En uh, voor wie dit nog eens een keer wil terugkijken, je kunt ons vinden in ons YouTube kanaal. Um, who are you and uh, what do you do? Um, I'm Sam Baker and I'm a founder of The Pool, which is a British digital platform, content platform for women. Predominantly women. Right. So, um, and, and it's only is it, it's only women? Is it all women or is it... Uh, We don't ban men. No. No. <laughs> men are allowed. Men are allowed. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Men, co men come to the pool for the for recipes and music. Weirdly, no, it's our broad. It's broadly 25 to 45, but 80% 25 to 45. Right. So, and, and there's there's a lot of content on uh, uh, on the internet these days. So, what what, uh, what does your company differentiate from the from the others? Well, there's too much content on the internet, so it does seem like a weird thing to launch another content platform. Right. But we spoke to. Well, firstly, my background's in print, and the print business just dying and not really doing anything about how it engages all those women who no. are hungry for content so you know there's that but also everybody we every woman we spoke to and we did t tons of like coffee table research which said you know I just overwhelmed and swamped by the internet it's just so much crap so you know we bought we tried what we did was set out to bring together the best of broadcast the best of print and bring it to them in a mobile space and we deliver 15, 20 pieces of content a day, that's it. And pieces of content, what kind of content is that? That's everything from blogs to video to podcasts. Um, and then we deliver different lengths, different times a day. And every piece of content tells you how long it will take you to consume it. Okay. Now, one of the problems in, in, in online content is how to monetize that. So, so how do you do that? How do we do that? We have a, a range of, uh, we have a monetization pyramid. <laughs> Wow. Wow, I know. It's not mine. I've got to say, I'm not the spreadsheet queen. Um, we have uh, brand partnerships, which are, they run across a year. And we work with brands like Marks and Spencer's in the UK, right. Estee Lauder, well, the Clinique brand at Estee Lauder. We've worked with Microsoft, Michael Kors. And those brands have deals that last a year. And they're about making content, really. Um, and it's not about scale. It's not a It's not about click through, it's about let's make content that this audience really wants to consume and you have the association with that. So we have five of those in place. We have capacity for 10 and then we also do native. We have a daily email, right. which is a big monetization source. And now we're also working on a consumer revenue source. So not too bad. What, working out. What, what exactly do you mean with the, the consumer revenue source? I'm working on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's another pyramid coming up. Yeah, it's the bottom of the pyramid. No, it's the bottom the of the pyramid. <laughs> uh, and and if, you, if you work with brands to, to, to develop content, how does that work? I mean, uh, it, do they have ideas of their own or, or are you completely independent creating content for them? Or? Yeah. If you've got a brand partnership, we're independent. If we make native, that's just right. advertorial content by any other yeah. name and everyone does that. Yeah. But the way we work with brands is they tell us what their objectives are across the year and right. then we come up with editorial concepts that, that fit with that. And you get much, much better engagement from the audience if you give them right. content that they want to consume than something right. that's basically an ad. But coming from print, uh, being an editor, uh, moving into this direction is a completely different kind of uh, uh, work, what you do. Well, yes and no. I mean, I think in the first, what I was feeling in print was that it's just about taking great content and giving it to the consumer in the and you've got to think about where they are and where they're what not where they are not just where they are physically which is on their phone in a coffee shop but where they are in their head at that point and then tailor the content to fit that and i think print has been really really bad at that right um i learned to code i learned about crm i learned about e-commerce and then we got together with people with a digital background a broadcast background and said what can we what can we bring together And it's you know it's gone from strength to strength. In the UK, we've got 650,000 monthly uniques, and we've built that audience organically. Oh, nice. Um, obviously, if, you, if you're an online publisher, there's a lot of technology that you have to use. Uh, yes, so yeah. You had to learn all that. Had to uh, learn all yeah, that. Yeah, yes. yeah. So, so, what do you use? How do you? What kind of tools and, and things do you use to 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 both engage and and uh, attract people and uh, um, and to monetize? Well, at the moment we're using, the, the platform is built in PIMCore and we use, we're, we're just very straightforward, we use, um, we just use GA, 
We just literally that we are just Google Analytics. Our, yeah, sorry, Google. An we just use Google Analytics. We don't spend. You know, which we are always trialing things like Echo Box. But at the moment, we just we haven't got much money. We just right. you know, we just use very basic tools right. and right. done okay so far. And now potential threat for a lot of uh, threat for a, a lot of publi publishers is seeing that that you see content moving towards other platforms like Facebook and, um, mm. and um, do you see that as a threat or are you do you see traffic moving there and, and are you engaging uh, to your audience there? We t yeah, we t we work with Facebook. I don't see the audience moving there. We get uh, you know we get traffic from there. Certainly, our traffic is. 50, 60% from social, quite a lot Twitter. Right. Um, Facebook, yeah, you know, Facebook's important. It's, you know, it's the monster we've all created and we all keep feeding it. But I definitely, uh, we, we don't get involved with any tools that take the traffic away from us because we're building our customer base. We're, you know, we're, we're building our own analytics. So we can't say, oh yeah, we'll just give you that. You right. go over there. No, but so, some people say you have to be where the audience is uh, instead yeah, of exactly. getting the audience to yeah. you. But if the audience is on Facebook, Yes, well, that's why we use them as a social platform. Right. Definitely, but we don't use... They, in fact, they've closed it now. Was it the Facebook news platform where people just gave them the content right. and it sat there and it never got any further? So you might do that as an awareness raising. Mm -hmm. But no, Facebook's incredibly important. More right. important than any other social platform right. to everybody, but particularly to yeah. us. So innovation is important for you because there's a lot of things that you have to try and to test to see how you can grow your audience and engage with them and everything. Is, is there any new trends that you see right now, right here, and that are happening that you find very interesting? God, that's a difficult question. I haven't prepared for it. Ah. <laughs> yeah, what, I mean, what, what comes to mind? Well, what's I think what's what's happened in and I don't know I don't know what it's like in Holland, but what's happened in the UK? is that people have been very much about expecting the mountain to go to Mohammed. I mean, mobile penetration in the UK is at 95% now. Yeah. And people have been extremely slow. Publishers have been extremely slow right. to adopt that. But we are seeing, what's quite in interesting is we, we chose not to, um, we chose not to be an app. We chose to be cross-platform so that people could have the same experience across all tools. And what's, weirdly what we're seeing is the growth of desktop at lunchtime. Oh, really? Which has really surprised me. Really, really surprised me because it's gone against it's gone against all the other trends. So we'll keep an eye on that for right. sure. So lunchtime is uh, is what we it's have to bear in mind. at the office, yeah. <laughs> and that audience stays longer because that you know they're sitting at their desk. I guess they're bored. Whereas your mobile audience is much more transitory, much more likely to come in for one thing and then leave again. Right. All right. Well, thanks very much. Okay. All right. Cheers. Thank you. En weer een nieuwe gast vandaag vanaf Emers ID live vanuit de Kromhouthallen in Amsterdam. We komen straks weer terug met een paar nieuwe gasten. Mocht je dit terug willen kijken kun je terecht op ons YouTube kanaal. Mocht je dit live zien, we zijn straks weer terug via Facebook en emers.nl.